<laughs> Yay! <gasps> Hi, Arthur! Hello. <laughs> it's a day. A day full of wed. <laughs> wed that ends day. Because it's yeah. spelled horribly wrong. I'm sorry. It is. I'm definitely yes. in that team. That is a word that I have to Aww. mentally spell. Wed in day. With an S in there. <laughs> do, do, do. What's up, everyone? We're getting ready to do a show. Talking about Jelly Bean. What's up, man? Hi, brother. Hi, Jelly Bean. You'll have to go and watch uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly Saturday. Why As you know, you I filled in. That? Well, I filled in for Pedro. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm asking. <laughs> Jelly Bean's like, nah, man, I'm good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yep, you did a Steve good job, been... Joe. <laughs> Aw, thank you. <laughs> Pedro, um, you know, I'm gonna refrain from making jokes until the plane touches down, and they then they don't let them in. Then I'll make jokes. <laughs> but until then, we're gonna have another two-person show. Yeah, man, we can thank Empty for that. It's great. Oh, I know, it's beautiful. I love that. All That's right, one Pedro. of my favorite shirts. <laughs> yeah, so let's get space internet going. Yeah, me and Ven were talking about that. I know, right? <laughs> that is the connective thread. I'm definitely thinking about it, man. Yeah, because it, it will, you know, it'll force the the landline providers to come down on prices. And I, that's always a good thing. Man, I just want something. I want that option. And I want something with less latency than fiber optics, and space internet can deliver that. Yeah. <laughs> Light travels faster in a vacuum. I saw a good breakdown of that. Mm. With like the fastest uh, private cable, under undersea cable between, it's like, lands in New Jersey and somewhere up above um, Wales. Like the round trip oh. is... I think it's like 64 milliseconds each way, so 100 and some change. And the working theory with everything working correctly with the Starlink constellation is it would be roughly 10 milliseconds faster. Amazing. Yeah, I know there we are uh, um, here. They're testing 5G. Um, yeah, right in their immediate area. <laughs> Why don't you get some of that? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, my phones have been going crazy because of it. They're having a hard time connecting because they're not, you know, they're older phones. <laughs> so, but I have a newer one I need to set up. I don't have anything that's 5G. I can kind of get... It depends on who you're on, too. Like Sprint's pretty good. Um, my Verizon LTE... I want if I want that at full speed, which is good, I can go upstairs on the top deck, furthest right hand side, and kind of hold it up a little bit, and it'll connect. <laughs> yeah, cellular data. I don't know if five G is going to be the hotness everyone thinks it's going to be. Yeah. Just because of congestion, I think if you're in a uncon like L A, it's going to be rough. <laughs> Jill waits until we start a show, then she starts playing with her phone. No, no, I, I, I was setting up a tweet, but what happened, you know how then it, it happened, my hands are sweaty, so the phone is... I do now, <laughs> and I'm going to give you a lot of crap about it. <laughs> well, I'm trying to, to send a tweet, and I can't paste the link because my hand, my phone is not reacting to my hands, so I'm just going to go and retweet your, your tweet. <laughs> you got to get some um, weightlifting chalk, like Jordan does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. He's like, this is great. The controller. He did it once because it's like, man, you're going to come back to that controller and like, oh, I have to clean that off. Yeah. 5G is most certainly up. 
There we go. Yeah, my phone just doesn't like my my fingers are are sweaty. <laughs> do what I do. Uh, that tweet I posted. Yeah. I think I did that at like nine this morning. Yeah, yeah. That's well. I did. I. Oh yeah, yeah. I should have done that earlier. You, last week I did. But... Tweet deck. If anyone's wondering, that's the easiest way to do it. Mm-hmm. It's the best way to look at Twitter. Yeah, I, li I like to use TweetDeck on the desktop. That's how I use it. I mean, monitors mm -hmm. just... <laughs> all, my, all my newsy searches, all my Linuxy searches. Very boring and tech-based, but hey, man, it gets the job done. And I got my notifications. All those wonderful at replies. I had somebody earlier today. Mm. I spotted the Linux gaming search on TweetDeck. And they're like, yeah, Linux gaming. I'm hopeful for it. Unfortunately, DXVK is on hiatus, so I don't know. Mm. Which I lovingly replied. It's like, listen, son, that, it's no longer the case. You do know there was a new version of DXVK that just came out last week, right? I was like, well, mm. I'll have you know... <laughs> um, Somebody made a video about it. Um, yes. <laughs> and it's like maybe his information was out of date. And it's like, maybe it was. Maybe it was. Turns out it was a little bit out of date. Then he said, well, it's good that the creator of DXVK is now working with DX12 and on the team for DX12. I didn't even know what to say to that. I just let him have that one. I was like, you know what? I don't have time for this. Everyone, uh, yeah, I didn't... do your part, do your best. If you see, just, you know, because people try to help them out. Don't be mean to them, but usually, <laughs> usually, you know, I'm say unfortunately, a lot of people who know nothing about what they're talking about speak loudly and with authority. Just, just, yes. just <laughs> kind of roll in there and be like, hey, man, here's the link. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe go check that out. Sometimes they will. Sometimes they'll just get angry. That's cool. That's human nature. Cactus smoke? Yeah, it's pretty cool, Foxy. That's an Australian <laughs> cactus. <laughs> That's so funny. They had a, a smoke uh, cactus container. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that looks like a loyal nuclear warhead. Um, <laughs> it does <laughs> look like the A-bomb and, and going off in Nevada. The start of it. <laughs> it looks like a sassy mushroom cloud. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, Strikor, Matthew, Strider. <laughs> You're just going to have to pick one name for that boy and stick with it. <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> My friend, Matthew. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. I think I'm going to go use the restroom, then before we start. How dare you. <laughs> All right. Cool. I'll be back. Here's the Frenchman. I'm sending a message on Twitch that mentions the NRC and said, Ha! Good! Good! Arthurian, you've watched me long enough to know I'm always fine. I'm always numb. Moderate mood of mild irritation. Good mood, man. Come on, it's Wednesday. We're doing a show. We're gonna do a show about Linux. Talk about Linux, open source, all that fun stuff. It's hard to be in a bad mood if you find yourself in a bad mood from that. If anybody wants to see me in a slightly less than optimal mood, go watch the uh, VOD of me playing Open Tomb last night. That was an adventure, kids. It was. Ah. You see, never confuse a bad mood with honesty. People do that in these modern times. Um, yeah. Got open Laura together, so we had some of that retro hipster polygon going on with the original Tomb Raider. That thing is a chore. To play with a controller. That game was not designed... I mean, the concept of dual... Dual analog sticks didn't exist in 1996. 
it didn't. And they were doing their best with Open Laura to get that mapped. So it kind of worked where you didn't have any free look, right? You had a button to hold down that would give you free look, which I think was... But you do have a free look, and if you're just using a trackball or, you know, just a mouse and a keyboard, it didn't work with this. So you had, like, the free look combo mixed with movement. Then you had a camera that would kind of auto-lock sometimes on angles, and it was clearly j of Japanese design because it was trying to kill you. I... It's probably entertaining to go back and watch, but at the time I was very frustrated between two bridges that I finally figured out how to do it. It's like, okay. It's the most difficult game I ever played. Um, hmm, like video game? What are we talking? Because, like, when I get a throw down with that, it'd be like, um, Video game. Hmm. That's a good one. What would be a good one? Like, okay. See, now we got to drill it down, though. Because you don't want to cover too, too far of a spectrum, right? Or are we talking about games that are intentionally hard? Are we talking something like a Dark Souls, uh, or are we just talking about something that was engaging and challenging and allowed for progression, but it wasn't made like F you hard on purpose? Because these games exist. Like a good challenging game. I don't know. Off the top of my head, man. What's yours? Since you have, have, have this question queued up. While I think, I gotta go into something that I put a lot of time in, but modern games in general are not designed to be terribly difficult. It's just, just too much busy work. Oh, that's what you were gonna say. Right, I should have saw that coming. You were talking about that last night. Claw from 1997, is that a Disney game? monolith all right I, we can go to games that i've never beat which i guess does that fall under something being hard it's like i never could figure it out like throughout the entire generation of the system i had um zelda 2 which had battery backup so it did have safe states i could never beat that game not the crawl. So where's the crawl located, Steve? Show me on the doll. If you have something stuck in your crawl, where on the human mammalian body? Hey, good on you, Turbo Pancake. It is the stomach. You have something stuck in your craw. You, I don't know. Maybe I just don't hang out with Clevin when I ask that question. They assume it's like in the neck or face tube area, and it's not. An idiot stuck in my craw. Yeah, I think I did too, man, until, like, I looked into it. I looked into it, I typed it into Google. I, I did extensive research. Oh, good of you to join us. Hey, Jill. Hello. What are you doing? <laughs> Preparing for a show. <laughs> she, she's reading chat. <laughs> Sorry, it took me a little longer. What Being... do you have on a sweater, man? <laughs> yeah, it's actually, it's actually been kind of cool here in LA. 
but it's it's not that bad. But it's nice and sunny out. Nice and sunny. But, yeah. <laughs> but the house was cold this morning, so. <laughs> yes, you get your booth. Wonderful, Matthew. Yay. What are you gonna put in the booth this year? I say we need to have uh. a crepe maker. <laughs> and bring him stuffed um crappy bears. Yeah. Rodents. Yay. Wonderful. Wonderful, Matthew. Can ah, oh, that's cute. Rules are made to be broken. <laughs> that's kind of dark, man. If they charge you to go to scale, then force you to only eat their food, they can die in a fire. Oh, yay, Matthew! Can't so, yeah, take you out week... if you don't go for that ridiculousness. <laughs> Going over show notes in the bathroom, sis. <laughs> no, I wasn't, but. <laughs> Yay. I'm so excited, Matthew. Yay. Nope. No bananas for scale. <laughs> ah, yep. We had one last year. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and No, Matthew, you take the edibles before you go to scale so you don't stab anyone. <laughs> That's good. I'm going to go grab drinks, Jill, so that means you okay. have to talk for like two minutes straight. Yes, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right. Everyone narc on her I come, she doesn't pull come. it off. Okay. Come get your Lutris gummies. <laughs> yeah, so what's nice is I usually don't have to worry about food at the booth because everyone always brings it. But I am so busy, I don't have a chance to eat it anyways. <laughs> so, but everyone always brings us snacks. And uh, for those that aren't working the convention, uh, they have time to eat it. <laughs> eat them. <laughs> Oh, the most difficult. Hmm. Good question, Arthur, and good question. Well, one of them it ranks high up there is is the Talus Principle, because there are three endings, and uh, the the last ending. Uh, was very difficult for me to get because I had a really hard time seeing where where the hidden stars were. <laughs> I guess that one for me, you know, that that's the one I spent the longest time on trying to get. Let me see. Yeah, the the puzzle games that that are the most fun and challenging are the ones that. I get so excited when I uh, 
you know, make it to the end on a lot of those, the really hard puzzle games. <laughs> Those are my favorite games to play, are the puzzle games and the the first person exploration and and very artistic games are definitely my favorite. Because I, I like the mental challenge. But what's nice is I can go at my own pace in those, which I like. Sometimes there's timed elements, but usually get through those. <laughs> uh, what's yours, Artharen? Yeah, because me and Ar Arthur and like a lot of the same games. I'm on. Oh, I'm um I'm stuck on a on, on section on in antechamber right now. And antechamber is it, it gets pretty difficult, but I'm close to the end on that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've beaten Claw yesterday after 15 years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, the Talus Principle. It was about a year before I, I got the... That last... Uh, winning that... The, the third way to win it. And I had no... What was so awesome is I had no idea there were three way, three different endings... Mm -hmm. Still, until you play it, because I hadn't heard of anyone else who had beat them. <laughs> oh, claw. <laughs> Matthew's good at. Oh yeah, you've been, Patrick. You've been on Vermintide. I noticed. Did you get to play with Foxy last night? Mm -hmm. A mirror. <laughs> yeah, what's up with getting good at video games? <laughs> That's the thing is, is I am much better at single player first person games. The, that is definitely because I can really focus and it's visually, you know, easier for me because I can go at my own pace. <clears throat> so, what are you into? Doom, Quake. <laughs> I like I like Doom. I like Quake. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's nice that Halo is working on Linux now, too. Portal. Yeah, and, oh. and Portal, of course. Some of the Portal mods have been really freaking hard. Um, yeah, the, I, I, got, I was stuck in one of the sections on... Um, oh, what's that mod, mod called? There's so many different mods I've played. Oh, oh, yeah. My favorite mod, Aperture Tag, there was one section that moved so quick that I visually could not see what was going on. Mm. So I, I had to replay because you're moving so fast. What? Oh, yeah, Vin. So what's cool about Aperture Tag is it uses the gels, your speed gel and your bouncing gel. It doesn't yep. use portals. And so in, in some of the maps, you redo some of the original maps from Portal 2, with, but with gels. And then they added new maps um, to it that are really challenging, and they're like a, it's like a roller coaster ride because they have loop de loops, like you're on a Hot Wheels track with the speed gel. Wee! You have all the, and, and that's what makes it so fun is you're you're really flying around. And yeah, um, yeah. Is so an there's an interesting one. Um, <laughs> like single player with Portal Two, I got to a point where I just said, after this, I'm out. And but I I beat it with the Jordan. We went through it. And yes, you did. <laughs> I remember the gels. Then that was I got really boring towards the end because it was forty five minutes of us walking around going what? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, it was real quick up until the point to where Jordan had forgotten how to beat certain maps. Mm, then yeah. The playing field was level. Yeah. <laughs> True that. So things yeah. got slow. Yeah, I wish I could play multiplayer with like Aperture Tag and, and some of the better mods. 
Yeah, Vin, if you have have you played Aperture Tag? It is one of my favorite all time favorite games. It's in the top ten. <laughs> no, I haven't. Yeah, I just it it was just one developer, and he spent like ten years on it, and just did an incredible job oh. of the the feel of Portal Two, but again using using um, gels, which was a really intelligent you know mechanic just to use the gels. I want a Portal 2 mod that replaces the Portal mechanic with ham. Yeah, <laughs> ham. <laughs> I don't know how it worked, but I play. <laughs> <sighs> we gotta do a show, though. Yes. I know. I know. Really, in pain. <laughs> I don't know. Has it, do we have an update? Because it's genuinely... Let's see. Can we get Portugal? It depends on who's flying. That's an hour mm. flight. Two hours. Max. Max. Okay. But hopefully they let <laughs> him in. <laughs> we have that one. That's two, three shot. Uh, Mm -hmm. Death by Penguin. I don't know, man. It's a little overrated, but hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Portuguese Penguin. <laughs> I think everything is good to go. Recording's locked. And we can pause that country tune. And we can bring that up. Aww. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right there, and I haven't seen that GIF in a while. GIF. <laughs> yeah, right there, and is the one I first. That was the first time I saw. Is when you pasted it a, a couple years ago. <laughs> Board lock. Lock. Cool. <laughs> ah. It is 20 degrees outside. This is ridiculous. I'm not complaining. Oh, okay. It's actually warmer at your house than it I is here. I have windows open, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down with this. 20 degrees is great. Yeah, it's about 5 degrees uh, cooler here. So, let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I want to keep this snug, but I want to maintain the rotation. And I have like four different screws working against me on this. Oh. <laughs> I like the free movement. Thank you again, Basil. Yeah, that's such a nice, nice mount. It works. I can move it and do stuff while other people are talking without having to like slide everything out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> In three, two, and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit Hello. back, relax, take that midweek <laughs> break, talk about Linux, talk about open source. What else are we going to talk about, Joe? Portals? Portals sound like a good thing Aww. to talk about? Yes, we were, we were having a great time talking about our love for Portal and the Talos Principle in the pre-show. <laughs> the Royal Week? <laughs> our love? Our love? Our love? Our love for Portal. I don't know. The Apparently, I love Portal and the Talos Principle now. That's cool. All right, I'm down with that. <laughs> I do like the Talos Principle, but can't live with Portal though. I promise you, this is not going to be a gaming show. But um, I hit the same thing in Talos. Uh, Talos, the fantastic benchmarking engine um, that also has a game built into it. Mm -hmm. I got to a point in Talos. I was like, you know what? I get it. I understand this. I'm a hundred percent sure. Given enough time, I could figure this out. Don't care at this point, no. <laughs> oh, okay. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, those puzzles get really challenging at the end. I was I was just telling Artharon about there's three different endings to Talos Principle, and it took me about a year to finish the last one. <laughs> I, I said, better than me. Better than me. <laughs> Dude, uh, what's up with that new thing in front of your face hole? Yeah, so yeah, so I am using my new Aston Stealth mic That's that my Steve husband gifted me while dressed as Santa in the See, after Steve, show of our Christmas episode. That, <laughs> go back and watch Saturday. He's like, yeah, my new Aston mic. Thanks, Vin. Yeah. It's like, yes, yeah. Steve, man, come on. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you to Vin, too, because this is the one he chose for me because it has a girl mode. <laughs> it's got boy mode, girl mode, guitar mode. It's and not that it's a natural. fantastically constructed mic with really good dynamic response and a tight cardioid pattern. <laughs> girl mode, yes. ladies and gentlemen. That was my deciding <laughs> factor on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and I also had a great time filling in for Pedro on Linux Gamecast Weekly this past Saturday. It was a really, that was really fun. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Um, yeah. Oh, he'll be aww. back next week, everyone. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. Um, what am I? What do I have going on? Uh, oh, right. I was talking yeah. about that a minute ago. There was a splicing truck. The fiber is still getting closer. My neighbor Yay. Owen. Allegedly, unless AT and T is like, no, not you. Why? Reasons. Ha ha. Somebody watches the show. And oh, I am trying something new is I always operate on if three people tell me like a thing or I want a thing, do a thing like first person. I'm like, that's a good idea. Always listen to ideas, you know, suggestions for like shows or anything like that. Second person, by the time it gets like the third person, it's ballparking around that same idea. I was like, okay, statistically, <laughs> maybe I should at least try this. So I will with this episode, if it works correctly, because recording this, people have been asking for the uncut in just an audio podcast form. Mm, yeah, so nice. And our uncut just is like as soon as we go live and till we shut down. We do make the video available. Yeah. And a couple of people watch that. So on the uncut page, I will attach the audios because you get a little custom RSS feed on Patreon. Oh, and cool. You can just plug that and download it or just download the file itself if you want. Nice. We'll see. We'll see how that works out if people like that versus if this even works. If you're like, where's the show? It just didn't survive. <laughs> that could be a thing. I have to watch it on video. So, Yeah, sounds awesome. Do you, do you want to talk about some stuff that's going oh, on? Oh, okay. So Plasma. Okay, so this is yesterday. Microsoft stopped providing updates for Windows 7. So let's try to migrate um, all our friends and family and, and people, as as many as we can, to something better. Uh, Linux, of course. <laughs> so, and one suggestion is the Plasma desktop, because it is a great choice for Windows 7 refugees, because it has the same menu layout and look and feel of a classic Windows desktop. And, you know, the Plasma team have started a campaign and need help with ideas, organization, and getting the word out. Or you can help by telling your friends, coworkers, and family. And that's always a good thing. I, I spread the, lo the love to all my students and get them converted over using animation software on Linux. So I like this. Um, I, I apparently <laughs> don't have some script enabled, and they're like, "Here, this looks just like Windows Seven. It's a blank screen." I'm like, ooh. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I ran into that. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, the other thing is honestly, why should we try be trying to make the Linux desktop experience for new Windows users look the same as Windows? Because people have been doing that since Linux first had an X server. <laughs> Yes, well, very that, true. That and a Mac. <laughs> I think a lot of yeah. people went for like the Mac look. Yeah, definitely. So, but Linux has so many diverse desktops that are easy to use. And with the popularity of Chrome OS, Android, iOS, Mac OS, users are used to using different desktop interfaces. So, you know, Mate, Budgie, Cinnamon, Gnome, Pantheon are also great for Windows users migrating to Linux. And they all are, and and so is Plasma. Uh, Plasma is a great choice. So, uh, honestly, any modern Linux distribution <laughs> is perfect. <laughs> mm. 
I saw a lot of talk. I was watching on the um, PC World podcast, uh, which they do. Which is a, it's a fun show. It's more oh, hardware yeah. related. And the, the, like the entire opening of like, what will people do now that Windows 7 is it? Uh, yesterday was official, right? It was EOL. Yeah, right? no security correct. Patches. I genuinely think that the people who are still running Windows 7 are the same people that would still be running XP. They don't XP. care. The, the computer yeah. box thing <laughs> device is in the corner and it's not going to get upgraded. And if you have the misfortune of it being a family member and you're like, okay, listen, there's still a way to get Windows 10 on that. Then you're going to be responsible for telling them how come this thing's no longer in that exact same place. And uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. That so, is definitely a thing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have no desire to try to... Sw I, I've gone through this in my life, you know, and like right when I get in, you know, the, back in the 90s, even like probably up until the mid-2000s, I was definitely the one of like, hey, have you heard about our Lord and Savior, Lydus Torvalds? Let me convert all your computers to Linux. And then you're responsible mm -hmm. for that person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that that is very true. Except when you give it to someone that is more uh, technically inclined and and understands things more, then you don't them you don't have to worry about. Yes, you do. So. <laughs> is, is that the lie you tell yourself so you don't have to do the no. tech support? You're like, ah, no. you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. You know, and part of that again is because you know Linux part of of the learning is tinkering with it, and those who are serious to move over, that's what they want to do with it. They want an operating system that they can you know, manipulate and make their own. <laughs> uh, we, we'll say the type of person that is going to end up running Linux is not going to be the type of person that's like, oh, look, it, the type of person that doesn't know that their operating system just outside of the pop-up is no longer getting, they're not going to be the person who's going to, let's make the switch. I'm not poo-pooing the idea. It's yeah, a great idea. Yeah. Let's get everyone running that. But mm -hmm. then I'm going to bear everyone who's like well you know the desktop's going away anyway because i don't yeah. feel like fielding those emails <laughs> let's talk about something that's really exciting though yes <laughs> of this kde stuff let's talk about the uh, best XFCE. desktop manager in existence i'm sure everyone <laughs> wholly agrees with me right, right? <laughs> yeah that's right it is one of the best <laughs> uh this is a little blog update, and this is for the 415 update. You know, it starts out saying, yo, you know, there's a lot of reasons that 412, a uh, four-year development cycle, we didn't get a lot of um, maintenance releases and fixes because everyone was busy getting thing, everything over to GTK3, which they were, you know. But they do say, hey, man, coming in 415, we're going to finally get the client-side decorations. Those have already showed up in LibXSC for UI. Those changes, mm -hmm. like all the dialogues and stuff, are going to be converted using CSD by default without any code changes needed for the existing projects. And mm. that's really neat, man. I am 100% done with that. Now, oh, yeah. <laughs> 415 will also have an improved. Now, is there a screenshot? They show this off in, with just the about XFCE. So it's going to be better looking than just like the regular pop-up window that you're familiar with. That's going to be a thing that dialogue default dark mode, huge mm -hmm. fan of that. That's huge awesome. fan of that. Especially <laughs> with like 43 inches of retina searing IPS in front of me. Uh -huh. Dark yes. mode. Big fan. <laughs> um, and only themes that support GTK three will be shown in the appearance dialogue. So Yay, you, you don't have improve. that like option yeah. of like, does this theme? Oh, well it kind of works. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, man. Yeah, unifying the XFCE desktop. Awesome. And there will also be improvements to the display dialog, which will show aspect ratio and preferred mode settings. And the directory menu plugin now allows you to directly create folders and files. I was happy about that. Because <laughs> then you don't have to go in another location to do that. So very, very, very good. They're having lots of wonderful updates. And we have a lot to look it's forward to. Frightening. It's frightening. It's not, <laughs> I'm not used to getting updates from XFCE. Yeah. What is this? You, it's you, so this exciting. Madness, this newness. <laughs> I'm still running 412. Because mm. 412, mm. bait. Yeah. There's no, I, I'm not going to say there's no bugs in it because something <laughs> would crash if I said that. But 
on um, our streaming rig and everything I have. All these boxes are running 412 because it works. It's great, but I'm looking forward to this future. I just... Uh, I'm just going to sit back and take that approach. You know, I'm used to things right now. They're going to have to EOL 412 before I'm going ah, away from Yes. It. Yeah. I run, I run stable as well. <laughs> uh, 414? Um, I actually, um, 412. 414 Still stable. 412. Yeah, it is. I need to update. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna happen. I tried it. I tasted it. And it's like, yeah, it's a ah. thing. you know what? That's cool. You can hang out over there right now. Not broke, <laughs> don't fix. This is something I'm trying to teach myself. Yes. With everything in the <laughs> studio. This oh, is very definitely. difficult to do because you want to play with new stuff. Uh-huh. And that's hard. Yeah, you and you're like, stability. oh, I just want to update. And it's like, is it broke? No. Okay, well, write a business plan for why you need to you have to do that. And you have to do it to yourself, which is cruel. Yes. It's mean. Yeah. A little bit of a PSA for everyone, though. Uh, yeah. In so case you didn't update, know. Uh, update your Firefox. Make sure to update your Firefox from um, Firefox 72 to 72.0.1. Mozilla found a vulnerability that hackers were actively exploiting in targeted attacks against users. This has been accomplished with Firefox's first in time compiler, which speeds up performance of yes, JavaScript to make websites load faster. And in doing so can allow malicious JavaScript code to run outside of the browser on the host computer. And yeah, so how many issues have there been with drop JavaScript over the years? It just seems like that one gets hit quite frequently. <laughs> well, I know you're a huge <laughs> proponent of um, VB script over JavaScript. And, uh, uh, yeah. You, you want to bring back, i.e. proprietary extensions to the web. Yes. No, I do like JavaScript, but it does always seem to be the, the target for a lot of these It's attacks. here. It's a cockroach. You're not getting rid of it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's like people give me static for when I'm rolling out like a lamp stack. You're like, what? You want to use Apache and PHP? Like, they're never going away. Yeah. <laughs> However, I'd prefer to use Nginx over Apache just because it's so easy to use. This, yeah, <laughs> update your systems. When this was yes. released, this was a zero day. It was actively being exploited. Even my old, crusty, delightful Debian 10.2, they were like, yo, update, mm -hmm. yeah. update. Just get mm -hmm. it taken care of. You don't need to know what it does or what it did. Just update, because I know a yeah. lot of you are running Firefox, myself included. Yes. But I'm using that new advanced um, ESR. <laughs> Um, oh, yes. <laughs> ancient, ancient version, <laughs> which shipped with Debian 10, but I only use it for, to like manage YouTube. That's uh, mm -hmm. definitely a thing. But, but mm -hmm. um, how do we want to go with this? Um, a yeah. How are you going to pronounce a that, Jill? Go ahead. AOD Linux? A I think the, yeah, AOD. I think the E is silent after the D. <laughs> Aod? Possibly. A O E D E. <laughs> I want to call it A O D, like Odie. Yeah, Odie. Maybe that, I'm, Odie right, Garfield's you know what? Odie. Too late. The A is silent. It's Odie. Um, okay. <laughs> Odie Linux. New rule. I just made up. It is uh, audio, a new distribution focusing on audio production. And welcome to Linux Gamecast or anything I do. I'm, it's like, what moth <laughs> flame? I'm going to take a look at it. And this is just a custom. I mean, this is an alpha one release of this. Let's go to the main page. We're looking at might want to throw a little bit of extra information in there. Cause this, mm -hmm. this is a new description. Yeah. Uh, website yes. set up, but let's give you the mm -hmm. pitch. Odie Linux. It's arch based. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Somebody just got happy um, for audio engineering oriented distribution in the vein of Ubuntu studio, AV Linux and KX mm -hmm. studio projects, which only to name a few. That's where it's taking its inspiration. The bulk of the modifications to the Arch provided Archizo uh, release engineering scripts were taken from the Arch wiki entry professional audio, yes. which I recommend that anyone take a look at because Arch, Arch documentation, it's gorgeous. Um, the Arch wiki, mm -hmm. brilliant resource. Um, it's built to work with 32 bit. Hey, that's a thing. And uh, 64 bit packages. It just needs mm -hmm. 11 gigs Very of drive good. space. And. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty easy to get set up, man. Um, mm -hmm. Always happy to see. More the merrier with that. But yeah, 
you have some thoughts. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think it's wonderful having an audio engineering arch based distro because it just makes so much sense because you can get all the latest updates on audio software. I actually use um, an art, the arch based Endeavor OS, which I love as on one of my machines. So I can test the latest animation and video editing software, including Blender, um, which is in the in the repository so you don't have to go to their website and get the update and davinci resolve they have really good um uh, scripts to launch davinci under arch hmm. so it's 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 that's that's where i go out and test the latest and greatest and then i bring them over to my stable machines my lts and CentOS and whatnot for uh, rendering <laughs> Now, I should point yeah. out that it does ship with, uh, by default, LXDE for the desktop. Yeah. Like, All right, it's, it's an interesting choice, but okay. It's nice and light. Yeah. You can make that argument, but there are, <laughs> you can change up the script if you want to put something, you know, like um, XFCE, yeah. or if you just don't want no. the system to work very well, you put no <laughs> on it. Um, yeah. Pedro's not here. Okay, I'm trying to randomly attack a desktop manager because I, <laughs> I, I I personally like Gnome. I just wanted to throw that in. Um, as someone who allegedly knows something mm -hmm. about audio engineering production, I find this a curious choice because audio uh, hardware software moves at a glacial pace compared to everything else. Mm -hmm. And we'll look at to the point of where I'm running Debian 10 on this, but if you're watching the video, this little corner right here, this is our dedicated audio box. This is Jackbox. It's running 1804 and it's air gapped mm -hmm. because nah. once you have it running, when you have everything set up, you have your DAW, you have Jack, you have Pulse or whatever, and you know, your sequencers, your plugins, your effects, and everything, and you correct kernel setup, RT, or a queue set up correctly. You don't want to touch it ever. You, yeah. never, you don't want any <laughs> you updates to it. Updates. You, yeah. No. <laughs> You're like, boom, pull the Ethernet cord out of the back. <laughs> I mean, this this thing's not online. I mean, the fiber connection is between this and thread rubber. That's it. That's the only IP thing this thing knows about. So this is going to be an interesting thing. Uh, I'm curious yeah. to see what comes from it. I'm keep an eye on it because Yeah, definitely. I'm Definitely. not a huge fan of uh, Ubuntu Studio. Mm -hmm. I've, I mm -hmm. put that on, uh, one time and looked at it and I was like, mm, no, this is not my thing. But yeah, it could be your thing. And that's the beautiful yes. thing about Linux, isn't it? Oh, exa Everybody's exactly. got their own, own cup of tea on that. Uh, <laughs> oh, look, Linus oh, is being nice again. Yeah, we have our big story. <laughs> Do you know what? He is kind of being nice. He's yes. being nice. Uh, this is from Ars Technica. Everything is mm -hmm. going to be in our show notes. Linus Torvald mm -hmm. says, don't use ZFS. Doesn't seem to understand it. Oh, shots fired. Oh, um, yeah. Lin <laughs> Linus should avoid authoritative statements about projects he's unfamiliar with. Fair point. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say that now. Of course, you're probably like, this is old news. Not old news, but everyone knows what our stance is on ZFS. You know, yeah. the final system itself, tech on, a tech on its technical merits, completely safe to use in production, 100%. Mm -hmm. This boils down to, there was a kernel change, and it broke one of the shims to make um, ZFS work. That's kind of what it boils down to, oversimplification. Yeah. But... What it really boils down to is Linus doesn't trust Oracle. And what good reason, good reason, man. I don't trust Oracle. I don't like Oracle because <laughs> you killed Sun just to get their patent so you could try to sue Google, man. That's the only reason. Um, now, this entire mm -hmm. thing comes from uh, Linus. He was responding to a question like, last week regarding an update to the Linux kernel that broke a third party ZFS module. It's like, if somebody adds a kernel module like ZFS, they're on their own. Mm -hmm. They are. And yeah. I can't maintain it. And I cannot be bound by other people's kernel changes. Fair. Mm -hmm. Then he went on to say, <laughs> oh. then he went on to say, there's <laughs> no way I can merge any of the ZFS efforts 
until I get an official letter from Oracle that is signed by the main legal counsel, or preferably Larry Ellison himself, that says, yes, it's okay to do so and treat the end result as GPL. Yeah. <laughs> I can Very feel true. you. I, I can yeah. feel you, Linus. And like, yeah, with any other company, you might be, that's overkill. It's Oracle. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oracle, yeah. Little little bit litigious. Little yeah. bit. But um, he was correct, John? Yeah. yeah. Well, Linus was correct, of course, about the licensing issues, but he actually wasn't correct with this. Uh he, he states, don't use ZFS. It's that simple. It was always more of a buzzword than anything else, I feel. The benchmarks I've seen do not make ZFS look all that great. And as far as I can tell, it has no real maintenance behind it anymore. And yeah, honestly, this, it, this obviously does seem to be a maintenance issue, but saying that ZFS is a buzzword is highly inaccurate. And as Ven was saying, ZFS is heavily used in production. And it's one of the reasons why Canonical has included this progressive snapshotting file system in their latest Ubuntu 19.10 release that we tested. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, Not it's to be very f- stable. <laughs> Trying to be fair to you, man, okay. Um, oh, we love you, Linus. <laughs> uh, that, that little lovable critter, Linus. Um, <laughs> I do believe he was referencing Open ZFS. Yeah, and that was that was the other thing I was going to say. They use Open uh, ZFS for the Linux uh, port. <laughs> we use ZFS. Open ZFS is a different um, project. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> ZFS. <laughs> ZFS, the what you would use in production, is exactly what it is from Oracle. And Oracle's like, hey man, you can use it. Yeah. We we'll probably won't sue you out of existence. <laughs> Maybe. Um but yeah, to, to just poo-poo that because let's let's face it, compared to like ButterFS, ext4, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, anything along those lines. ZFS is Scandinavian witchcraft. Yeah. When it comes down to its abilities and use. So. Yeah. Well, and Butter SF has a lot of the same capabilities, you know, but it's not stable. It's not stable. And I could have said that exact same sentence 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jim Salter talks about that in the article. So, mm. <laughs> but That's yeah, I know. With Butter FS. Butter FS is like, it's almost ready, you guys. And it's like, yeah. Didn't you say that a decade ago? <laughs> yeah, that's the very true. Yes. <laughs> We'll see, Sorry. man. We'll yeah. see. Um, <laughs> Huawei has got a new Linux mm-hmm. distribution. Yeah. So um, Huawei offers a CentOS-based enterprise Linux distri- distribution called Euler OS. Euler? Yeah. Couldn't they have called it Bueller? <laughs> I know. Ferris Bueller's Day OS. <laughs> Sorry. So recently, Huawei has released a community edition of Euler OS called Open Euler. And due to the trade blacklisting of Huawei by the U.S. government, the source code is available at Gitsy, a Chinese alternative of Microsoft's GitHub. And, you know, it, it is awesome because as we've talked about last September here on LWW, Huawei is now selling their beautiful Matebook laptops at their very own uh, vMall uh, marketing site and um, um, store. And they're actually sending those out with the Debian i386 based Debian Deepin Linux pre-installed. So yeah, but there's something unique about about this uh, open URL. Euler, <laughs> open Euler that Ven will tell you about. <laughs> it's made entirely a broken dream. No, it's, oh. not. it's based on sin. And I was like, okay, well, I'm accustomed mm-hmm. to seeing, you know, business, you know, things rolled out on sin, but it's aimed at enterprise arm deployments, arm 64. Yeah. That's what it's awesome. been optimized for. I'm going to sit back mm-hmm. and I'm like, I'm going to watch this. Where are you going to go with that? That's kind of interesting Mm -hmm. because according to some, ARM's the future. Linus will tell you, ARM is not the future. Go away. (laughs) Yes. And he'll throw a ZFS module at you. And (laughs) I'm kind of interested, uh, always, always on top of whatever's going on, you know, with CentOS, just because that 
that yeah. that's an interesting critter to tango with and just the mm -hmm. uses of it. So good on you, mates. Uh, yeah. What do we have? On? Oh, right. This. Yeah. Hardware yes, I acceleration. Did, I didn't expect <laughs> to see this. Um, experimental yeah. VP9 support for the VDPAU driver for NVIDIA. You're like, okay, so what are you talking? For Chromium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chromium Vapi. Yeah. We'll be able to roll this out. Uh, this is forked off the VDPAU VA driver from Ubuntu, and it's going to add an experimental hardware video acceleration support for videos encoded using VP9. That's the thing mm. they used to use before. Now everything, well, they're rolling out AV1's the future, but yeah. VB9 was the future not so long ago. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, if you, there's a good chance if you're looking at something like uh, UHD or 8K videos on YouTube, it's going to hammer your CPU. It is. Yeah. It's going to be brutal on it. <laughs> like, why are the fans been... I was watching, it was something... I'd done. I think it was uh, my one of my Half Life uh, muscle that they recorded at UHD. Mm -hmm. I have a thread ripper, and it was yes, uh, and it was, was like, having what's yeah. going on. It wasn't having a problem playing it, but I mean that was spread out. I mean it was Working generating hard. some heat just to <laughs> play that UHD video. Yeah. So hopefully this is going to take care of it. I mean, if you have a reasonably new NVIDIA card, I'm going to say nine series and above. Mm -hmm. So just check your NVD code, uh, decode support matrix, which you can do that. Just go it. Oh, if you want to do it with a GUI, you can just pop it in, go to your system settings and just look under that. And you should have VDPAU hardware decoding support. So this is interesting. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, the, the goal for this project is to reach video hardware acceleration feature parity with Windows on Chromium or Firefox on on all the Linux distributions. Mm -hmm. And yes, we need that. And also getting 8K video hardware acceleration working like it does on Windows. And yeah, as Ven was saying, playing 4K videos from YouTube definitely could be an issue on Linux, even with the highest end software. What like if you're he was stuck saying. With a laptop? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just go from, you bring it down to 1080p. <laughs> but yeah, that's been an issue. And my 1050 Ti, did halfway decent uh, with it, but with 4K um, with 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 uh, uh, this plugin. But of course, I don't have that option on my AMD or or RX, uh, you know, 580. So mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it 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 slugs 4K along. This is... and I usually end up downloading it to play it because it mm. plays fine when you download it. It's just playing it from YouTube. <laughs> Being able to take advantage of that through your uh, browser, you can play it with like InPlay or um, InPlay. Yes, or I use, yeah. I still remember reading about that on Slashdot when we had the first announcement years and years ago, probably mm -hmm. close to a decade, ago, over a decade ago, when VDPAU was uh, announced and released for Linux. Yeah. Because now you're not thinking, you're like, hey, man, I got six cores, eight cores, 12 cores, 16 cores. Like, I don't yeah. care. I, I can just throw hardware at the problem. This was back in single core days. Yeah. Where <laughs> you, there was a good chance you could not play full 1080p video smoothly. Mm hmm You yeah, just I remember that was couldn't. A thing. You might get away <laughs> with 720p. And when VDPAU launched on Linux, we had that access. It worked for InPlayer. There was a patch. Yes. Because I remember. In the like, browser. You could using play back. CVS back in the day, there was yeah. no kit and <laughs> got that, and you could use the dedicated silicon in your NVIDIA card, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, I could play all these videos now that I used to not be able to, and I was very happy. It was kind of brilliant. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad to see VP9 awesome. support mm -hmm. show up just in time for AV1. Yes. <laughs> womp womp. All right. So we're going to give it to you. If you're in the moon... For some pie. What do we have this mm -hmm. week? Yeah. So this is ah, awesome. A 3D printed homebrew machine running a Raspberry Pi. And this Raspberry Pi 4 computer looks like a smaller version of my so-called 80-pound portable Texas Instruments 286 from my collection. It's a much smaller version, but the same idea, all, all in one. And yes, this is for 
you know, for those of us that, you know, are inspired by William Gibson, Gibson's 1984 sci-fi classic, Neuromancer. This is, this is your cyber deck. This is your, your deck into the internet and the virtual world. And it needs to be self-contained for security. It's a and... cyber deck? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what they're calling it. The cyber right. deck. <laughs> what, what would I call it if I was from New Zealand? Uh, 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 a kiwi deck. <laughs> I look forward to the comments. Um, <laughs> but this is really cool. It's got um a little touch screen on this on the side, and currently he's re running Raspbian with the i three window manager, and um it's got a, a really big honking battery on the back of it. And it's just this wonderful self-contained unit um, with the mechanical keyboard and USB <laughs> and all the plugs. <laughs> so you can do it's 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 a 3D printed computer. Who doesn't like that? <laughs> so this is awesome. I want want to make one. <laughs> it, it definitely does harken back to the luggables. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I saw that Mr. Alert pointed out something that I noticed. Uh... The screen is upside down and or inverted. Yes, yeah. So he had to had to flip it, and uh, maybe his eyes the, are just upside down. And the console, yeah. And this is the Reviser version one Cyber Deck. So this is his latest one. Fully three D printed case, seven inch touch screen, yeah. mechanical keyboard. Of course, you want to annoy people. Mm -hmm. you, you know, make it nice and portable. Click click click. Foldable mechanical on and off mechanical switches. on off switches, which are awesome. And I love these old, you know, foldable computers. I mean, that that is the, some of the, my favorite computers in my collection are these vintage foldable that have you know, most of mine, of course, have the little, uh, the little tiny, you know, four or five inch, uh, um, uh, white on green, you know, screen. But <laughs> CRT tubes, those yeah, baby ones. classic CRT tube, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I that that's neat. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Homebrew for the win. Uh, <laughs> and this one's neat, I guess, too, Ben. <laughs> I, was, oh, I mean, the creativity of this, this is neat. Um, like, job done, because there's people that are like, I like old stuff, and I like putting mm -hmm. new stuff in old stuff. And I'm like, yeah. you know what? We can all get along. I don't get it, yeah. but okay, that's cool. You do you, man. You know. Yeah, you can you can make a modern Commodore sixty four with a Raspberry Pi. That's, that's what or I'm saying. Man. Maybe ZX you can't Spectrum. find like the original like uh, stuff <laughs> to like hoard, so you can make yeah. your own stuff to hoard. <laughs> yes, yes. Great. Now I prefer using the original, but the point of this yeah, is that see, it's Yeah, but you see, you could actually like, do stuff on this though. It's usable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very true. Very true. <laughs> a modern processor, but that's what's cool about this. This is a homebrew. This is basically the Heath kit of, of the day. <laughs> 3D printing. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Check this out. Superscale mm -hmm. active suspension Arduino powered 3D printed RC drift Oldsmobile Dynamic 88 said that in one <laughs> breath. Uh, <laughs> Huge fan of the license plate, man. 999 yeah. evil when it does handstands. <laughs> yes, it is a mouthful, but it's a big project, and it's almost fin almost finished. ED, come on. I'm, I'm going to be <laughs> that guy. So you're wondering, like, what's going on here? So let's just go ahead and jump Aww. over to the video. And I'm Yes. Gonna, this, <laughs> this thing reacts like an actual... If this was like a two-ton, 4,000 freedom unit, and look at that intercooler on the front. I, I noticed that. I see that. Car stop. Ah, all right. I've already put someone to sleep with that. Yeah. It has active <laughs> suspension. It reacts like it was genuinely that heavy. If it's going around quarters, it would do the uh -huh. lean. If you push it forward, it has that lunge. Same thing with going back. This would be very interesting for movie bro i mean if you're doing miniatures oh, definitely because this is realistic yeah. physics simulation man and yeah. also why does it not have an ecto-1 paint job that <laughs> is kind of bugging me but uh what it does i mean that Arduino, it's like reading data off triple axis um accelerometer in real time so it's adjusting those servos on each single wheel man in real time 
to mimic just a car throwing its weight around. I mean, it's a real mm-hmm. suspension system. It looks legit. It's it really looks cool. Amazing. It looks like, you know, the the drifting on miniatures for the win. And and yeah, you know, for those of you who can't afford to do this on your own car in IRL, <laughs> drifting or bouncing, you could you can make one of these. <laughs> you could theoretically get bounce. Um Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's pretty cool, man. I, I'm down with that. <laughs> Unfortunately, as of yet, there's not a parts list. You can find a link to the blog. Um, but I was reading, so what did you do with this? He's like, I don't have a parts list for this yet. Mm. Well, he's working on making a module that'll be compatible with a lot of like RC cars and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Which is great. I'm sure there's people that want to buy it, but I'm the overwhelming majority of people who look at that or like, I just want a parts list so I can like source it and build it. So maybe keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> That's going to do it. Before we get out of here, we always like to remind you that our nonsense is completely community funded by you. Yes. Everyone kicking mm-hmm. in a few quid over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We try to give you some incentives and uh, for supporting our nonsense. It's kind of neat. Thanks, everyone, mm-hmm. again. For that, we do have affiliate links and stuff at linuxgamecast.com. We got merch. Look at look at yes. this green merch. <laughs> yes, this is the. Uh, it's not available anymore. This I, was, I like how you are going to get that behind out of the my, <laughs> process of, of elimination. This one, nope. This one, nope. This one. No, that was that was some this, AI level right there. It's like I can figure this out. <laughs> this mic is just too darn big. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Hell Santa. <laughs> oh, that is kind of brilliant. Uh, we do have an Amazon wish list for the studio. Jill's got one. It's kind of brilliant. You get your name on the wall if you get anything for our um, craziness. Oh, Pedro. Wish you were Aww, Not really. Pedro. And, uh, <laughs> that's going to do it. But yeah. if you want to get in touch with us, mm-hmm. LinuxGameCast.com forward slash contact. Tap that contact button. Send us some email, man. Select the right show. We do a couple of shows each and every week. Uh, Jordan's going to be back tomorrow and uh, uh, with uh, probably Vermintide, and I'll be back with some Freeman on Friday. Mm-hmm. We'll get relationship advice. Uh, tell us if we got <laughs> something wrong. Maybe we got something right. I always <laughs> try to grab YouTube comments, but please keep in mind, I have 1,200 videos posted on that, and they get <laughs> yes. all 1,200 of those videos at some point. Of every hour someone's leaving a comment, so it might get mm-hmm. lost. And I don't want to lose it. I want to talk back to you. Or just hop in our yeah. Discord. Mm-hmm. Your patron, just link that in. Come say hi to us, because that's where we hang out the other six days of the week. It's yes. terrible. It's frightening. <laughs> Actually, it's a super cool community that um, yeah. I'm glad mm-hmm. to be a part of myself. Yes. All right. And mm-hmm. uh, we can do some music? Yeah. Because we're going to roll some credits? Yes. Cool. Credits. And yeah, our Theron, you are right. That the cyber deck we were just talking about in the Pi segment, segment looks like the computer computers from the quadrilateral cowboy that you gifted me. <laughs> quadrilateral cowboy. <laughs> Big words. Uh, yes. <laughs> so thank you to our executive producers and our beautiful producers. We love you all. Without you, this show would not exist it absolutely would not this is a patreon goal show man come on yeah i mean it genuinely is that Mm -hmm. we're like yo would you like us to do something on wednesday and everybody's like yeah man we could do a thing on wednesday so we're able to finance it yeah definitely can't believe it's episode 205 wow (laughs) i can Uh, (laughs) yes because i've loved each and every one of them why are you laughing, yes. Joe? <laughs> oh, I love each and every one of them as well. <laughs> oh, love you, everyone. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> do 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 do. <laughs> Yay, we made it. Yay.
and I had to remember that this mic is so huge. <laughs> you can't hardly see my shirts behind. <laughs> I was about to get onto you at the beginning there. You you were missing it. Yeah, I kept missing it. <laughs> it's my other mic is so tiny compared to this one. That one I can, you know, just kind of move around. <laughs> you want to get that one lined up a little bit better. Oh, okay. Is it... Should I raise it up a little higher? Well, just make sure it's in front of your face. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> you're talking over the top of it right now. Yeah, I have... Uh, you know what? Actually, what had happened is it, it scooched down <laughs> while the show was going on. I need to get a better... Uh, that arm that I have on my wish zone. It's much stronger because this one is not. It's having a hard time because this is so much heavier <laughs> that I keep having to tighten it and tighten it. <laughs> mm. oh. mm -hmm. so had, that's uh... definitely a thing. I need, you know, and again, I couldn't even use my original mount because it won't fit this mic. You have to buy a special mount for it um, uh, the, to get the mesh mount. Oh, um, yeah. You do. Yeah. Of course, I used a big, heavy microphone on a cheap $60 arm for eight years. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, this one is probably a $20 arm. That's the only thing cheap in the setup is this arm. Oh, it, come on. That's an Amazon <laughs> filter. I know how much those cost, Joe. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the $10 pop filter. Yeah. But this one originally came with the first mic I got for doing the show. You but can I have... usually get a few years out of pop filter. Unless yeah. you're Jordan. Jordan changes them when he can smell his breath. Yeah. Well, what I like about this one is it's the um, the Amazon one is the, the cloth one. I have another one that's metal. Um, don't use those. Yeah, I don't like those either. Yeah. And so you need the cloth ones. You don't need... I mean, the metal yeah, ones it just will work. Work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, arms are, are cheap, but for a good one, like a road mic or like one Ven has, they're about a hundred bucks um, that articulate. That's what I want. I want one that I can see this arm. If I if I move it, um, you can hear it, you know, with, with the mic on the mic. So it's too loud. I need one that's smooth and everything. So why would you move it? Well, I don't usually move it except like you know during the intermissions when you want to get up and and leave and and go do stuff yeah. like jordan he moves his all the time but his doesn't make noise when he moves it mine yeah, does Jill's, he's got the same <laughs> cheap one that i had the exact one yeah <laughs> you can get a, one of those uh q mic arms for like 60 bucks that's what jordan uses that's what i used no. to use yeah and uh, this one, this yeah, is that's road. the road. Yeah, the road one. The reason I have this one is because I'm sitting and I have to get over here and back over here. Yeah, I know you're here. having to move around all the time. And try to. I think uh, Arthurian was responsible for getting me this. Yes, he was. Yeah, remember that. And yeah, to answer so your I... question, Arthurian, yes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just like one that I can move. Like when I'm done doing the show, I move my mic out of the See, way. I'd save to all the, the time and just be like, you know what? I, I want one. <laughs> yes. I want one that doesn't make noise. <laughs> See, I save time doing all this mental gymnastics stuff and reasoning. I was like, listen, I want one. <laughs> yes, I want one. I like the, the, neat, the articulation on the one you have. <laughs> Pine book. Yeah, I've been trying to see if, like, one, if I find a pine book that's, like, reason used, like, somebody's like, oh, I can't use this thing, I'm going to buy it and ship it to Pedro, so you'll shut up about not having one. Mm -hmm. Oh, Patrick, Matt, uh, Matthew, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mir will take my old one. Yeah, actually, he'll, he'll lay it on the floor. <laughs> actually, I'm, uh, um... What I was planning to do is put this on my other system in the other room um, for future use. <laughs> but but I would be happy to buy you one mirror because they're inexpensive. Mm -hmm. At least this one. <laughs> this is a $20 one. <laughs> Strider, 
I got bad news for you about the Pine Book. It would genuinely cost more to ship it than it would be to buy one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he has to be laptops already. We're good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're just like, I want one to play with. I'm like, cool. Yeah, I, I almost put the Pine Book Pro on my Christmas list, but decided not to, and I'm glad I did because Steve has been end up getting me the mic. <laughs> And to answer your question, Salty, as soon as I get a minute to, I, I, we've already, not, like, I, I've already talked about doing that. That's something that's in the works. Use it for the Facebook interview? Why would you use a pine book for a Facebook interview? You want to use something with a decent <laughs> camera at it. Um, on the fire. Mm. <laughs> I, I, well, no, the Kindle Fire. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, mm, are you talking yeah. about the, uh, the, yeah, the Kindle, like the Fire HD 10, I would. You could use. Yeah. Yeah, the, the cheaper Kindle Fires aren't yeah, good for that. If that's what you have, the six or seven inch, you I have both. Right on mm -hmm. a 10 inch screen. Mm-hmm. Like, I used this for years. This is our videos. This is a half a grand tablet, man. <laughs> this is the original Nexus 10. Yes. It shows that. It just says Nexus. This is a Samsung device, but. It's been reduced to a video switcher. Mm hmm. It's like technology becomes less useful over time. Eventually, Jill, I'm put it in a closet and call it vintage. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I have my touchpad behind me, and and uh, the BlackBerry Playbook over there. See, I was joking. Jill's like, "Nah, shit, son. I actually got this stuff back here, man." Yeah. <laughs> Uh, vintage. <laughs> Good art, Theron. <laughs> Man, Tim won't save anywhere that looks. What? Google Doc app works great on Fire HD 10. He's going to root it. Lineage. Yeah. <laughs> lineage 12. It's an old version of Lineage, but it works just fine. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Frank, Frank, Frank is a sexual Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> That's what Frank is. <laughs> Ah, man. What are you up to for the rest of the day, man? Oh, um, eat. Maybe do, maybe rest a bit. I'm still not 100%. <laughs> but um, I do some more planning for scale. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I'm in the mood to play some games today. You play some so. games? You hear that, Jill? Yeah. <laughs> You're playing Twister when you get home. No rest. <laughs> oh, Twister. <laughs> I like Twister. <laughs> it, it's too easy for me to play Twister. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're so tall. Yes. I actually did very well on it because I'm very, very flexible. Um, yeah, I've never had a problem with uh, not being flexible. <laughs> Yeah, see, the trick is to play Battle Twister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, but my legs are only so... I have very short legs. It's like... <laughs> that's when I run into trouble. <laughs> well, we can play around. We can have a challenge. Let's see if you can do the handstand longest. Oh, well, yeah, I'm good at handstands. 
<laughs> Aww. Don't go for the kidney, Scott. Yeah. Quit being me. And then handstands down to a flip. I, I used to do all that. I used to do that as a warm up um, all the time for playing volleyball and in the sand, which is hard to do a handstand on because it's uneven. So, all right, Steve. Learning how to do. I want you to get that camera out. I want to see Jill doing a handstand this afternoon. <laughs> you do that? Because I know I'm doing a handstand. I did a handstand last week. Good. Yeah, I know you've been, been doing them for your exercises. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Scott, can you do a handstand? I could probably teach Strider to do one. <laughs> Yeah, I used to be able to do one armed and all that. I haven't tried no. that in a long, long, lot of years, but I used to do one arm handstands off diving boards. <laughs> well, you don't need to tell the world that you're a moron. No. <laughs> the guy was trying to break my neck when I was young. But you know what, Jill? I'm proud of you. Grew out of it. Like I no longer try to. Man, I've seen people get seriously fucked up for the rest of their life doing stupid stuff on diving boards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have to be trained. I mean, I... I no, no, not trained. Yeah. Doing one hand stuff, I don't care if you're trained or not. That's yeah. stupid. There's oh, yeah, no you can... competition. Well, it depends on how high the, the board you, is. You, this... you can keep going with it. It's this dumb. Is, you know, it's a good a, way a, to end up not being able to walk. A 25-foot board, you gotta... You get, even with a 25-foot board, you gotta learn how to tuck. I had because my father was a Olympic diver and swimmer, so I I okay. he had trained trained me. Doesn't from a matter. Kid. It's a dumb thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's still dumb. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess so. I hey hey I've jumped off a fifty foot cliff in Mexico. That's cute. You've jumped out of an airplane. No, I know you have. I've always wanted to, but doc, I, I wanted to. Actually, I had opportunity to. We need to, to go skydiving. You, would you go skydiving yeah. with me? I would, except my heart doctor is not happy with that. I, I we had don't have told to tell him, him. <laughs> I was going to do it. And he goes, Jill, you're going to have a bad attack if you do that because of the, the pressure is too much. So we'll um, do it real, Okay, we'll go base jumping then. Okay, well, that I can do. <laughs> that's that's just maybe a, a hundred foot base jump. <laughs> we can find a bridge somewhere, rig up something yeah. sketchy looking. Like it's a probably hold. I yeah. Mean, you, you, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Skydiving. Yeah, Ben's done that. <laughs> That's something I've always wanted to do. And all my doctors always say, it's Don't really do that. boring because you have to do tandem <laughs> jumps. Yeah. They strap a person on you, and I'm like, man, we're in problem. Problemsville if something goes wrong, because I don't... It's fun, because you get a little tiny human strapped to you, and they're the one in charge. Mm -hmm. I've done um, mountain climbing with my dad um, in Yosemite. Um, I remember we had... Uh, we actually uh, went with a trainer, and learned how to do it, and then me and him did it together. Um, that was fun. I enjoyed that, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, you know, I only, I, I only went up about 50 feet. I, I was only 10 years old at the time. <laughs> you don't really watch a whole lot of Olympics, Scott. I mean, I, I was like, eh. the Olympics... Currently, are just a very, very shady business <laughs> organization. I mean, uh, they, yeah, can be. The Olympics are this year, though. I'm looking forward to that. I love, I love all the Olympics. I, I'm watching all the different sports, and I guess because I have a family history of it, so it's um, important to me. Um. <laughs> And, you know, when I was little, because my father was an Olympian, you know, and I was a swimmer like he was, and so was my brother, they, you know, wanted to train us uh, to compete, but I just was not competitive. I just, I wanted to do it because I loved it and liked it, not because I wanted to compete. And my brother was the same way. So. 
so. <laughs> oh, cool. That looks like it. <laughs> Uh, wait a minute. Or Theron. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> cool squids. Yeah, I love watching diving. I love watching the tandem diving and the... I mean, I was... I really enjoyed that. I... That was pro... That would have probably been the Olympic sport of the most I would have gotten into. Because um, I really enjoyed doing it. But I just... I wasn't a competitor. I wanted to do it for fun, for the challenge for myself. Uh, not not in front of people, you know. Hmm. All right, we're almost at 4.30, beautiful people. I gotta get to work. Yeah. Yeah, my brother, Jellybean, kicks ass. Yeah, he's... He can be really competitive, but what's what's nice in the swim that he does, he does it with the team. And they're not competing so much uh, against each other, but for their time, their lap time. And that's nice because then you're not, you know, trying to be aggressive or anything with other people. You're just trying to beat your own, your own time. But that's, that's the, that's the swim that all the Olympians and um, triathletes and a lot of the, uh, Iron Man people do. It's a very popular swim around the world. <laughs> so it's one of the hardest. All right, beautiful people. Mm -hmm. Call it night. Okay, everyone. Everyone bye have bye. a fantastic afternoon. <laughs> and I'll be back to see everyone Friday. Yay. It's a threat. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, everyone. Good night, or good evening, or good morning, wherever you're from. <laughs> I like, like the classic Laura <laughs> running. So cute. <laughs>